Hi everyone. So as Katarina said, you should all, you made the good choice if I may, <laughs> because you came to our room. Um, we'll be uh, working on a packaging smart city solution and Graham, I uh, let you take the floor. Manon, thank you. Um, and good day everybody from a rather chilly cold Scotland. Um, do feel free to um, put your camera on. That uh, makes my viewing a lot better and probably your viewing a lot better from the standpoint of looking at real faces rather than little circles with initials on it. But if you feel you'd prefer not to, that's absolutely fine too. Um, so welcome to this session, um, the purpose of which is to make sense um, of packaging. But more specifically, I think what we'd really like to do is to reinforce three things, reinforce the synergies that exist between um, scarce in the marketplace and the smart cities lighthouse programs. Secondly, uh, and most importantly, to get your ideas and feedback, and we'll talk about how we do that. Uh, and thirdly, to see if we can convert some of our activities into action. Um, Manon, uh, uh, maybe you can advise me, but if I look at my, uh, my, my picture, it looks like we've got at least 20 or so people. So personal introductions, is not really going to be a feasible thing. No, it's not. Indeed, we have a quite a success, so it's almost 30 people. So Super, super. So so we won't do personal introductions, but um, I, I think a headline from my perspective is your active participation is hugely welcomed, and we have designed the session to enable that to happen. So let me just share screen, um, and we'll have a quick look at a few uh, slides. So what I'd like to do is, by way of introduction, um, uh, just give you a bit of a picture in terms of, um, here we go, in terms of, uh, of what we mean by packaging. Um, and then we're going to go into a, a mural exercise and spend quite a bit of time talking and getting your ideas, um, to which Manon and my colleague Francesco will help by way of actually capturing some of your thoughts for those of you who are less familiar with Mural or who would like to just be part of the conversation and, and talk. Um, for those that would actually like to contribute by typing online, we'll show you exactly how and so you can really contribute to, to that process. So that really, I think, reinforces the objectives that I mentioned here, particularly the second one in terms of getting your ideas and feedback. By way of introduction, um, I'm Graham Coakley. I have been involved in cities for rather a long time. I've been involved in the um, the old um, EIP um, for smart cities, now called the Smart Cities Marketplace, um, since the very beginning, in fact, before the very beginning, and also involved in um, three of the ongoing Smart Cities Lighthouse programs for my sins. Um, I enjoy it, um, and, and this is really about trying to exploit the real power and potential from that community to really change things uh, across Europe. So if you will forgive me, I will canter through um, probably a, a, a hand, well, 10, a dozen slides reasonably rapidly, and then we'll move to Mural. All the material that I'll take you through is already on Mural. And in Mural, we'll start a conversation around the what, why, and how of packaging. So let me start just with a headline slide that really discusses the why, what, and how of packaging and how we're going to approach that. And then I'll dig, dive, dig deeper into each of those. So the first thing, um, we are now driven somewhat more by, uh, by sustainability and the SDG goals. So why would we want to package? In big picture terms, it's about being able to deliver the SDGs faster and better. And that will give us a better world, and a better life, and hopefully a more productive market as a result of that. Um, clearly the digital, the smart side of it enables all of that to happen, but that's the real purpose of what we're doing. And um, we'll talk about the current market, which is perhaps blocking the speed of progress and the quality of progress towards those SDG goals. Getting a bit more practical and tactical. So what is packaging? Um, it's like Lego, it's a it's a means by which we put together a portfolio of solutions in a way which supports dissemination, in a way that supports adoption and adaption by cities. 
And what we are currently in the state of play of doing is focusing on four different solutions that have different characteristics, different market characteristics. They are a smart lamppost, which should be the aspirin of a city, an e-bike or potentially mobility islands, also quite simple. Um, however, also something which is actually driven by people and by the private market, so a, a distinction there. Urban data platforms, absolutely vital and enabler for all cities, but putting the business case together to actually invest in it is difficult. And then the final one is, is, is housing, um, which one could relate to positive energy districts. So the intention in terms of the what is to take you through how we could package up solutions to provide a proof point from those four different solutions that can really link what's going on in, in the smart cities marketplace and what's going on with the lighthouse cities. And then finally, in terms of the how, um, the simple headline is to deal with things in a multidisciplinary fashion, to um, put together a portfolio of guidance and tools, so documents and, and technology tools that will help cities and their partners to join up three things, which is uh, three things are typically not actually joined up in most cities in terms of what is it that we actually want to offer in terms of improvement to society? What are their needs? What are the technical options that support that? And what are the business models and financing mechanisms? So those three things are typically not dealt with in a really solid joined up way. And most importantly, in the middle of all of that, to actually understand the context of a city because every city is unique and different. However, they have common DNAs. So that's the headlines around packaging. Let me dip down fairly rapidly to go through a number of different slides and then we'll move to the mural. Odd, it seems my, oh, there we go. So um, by way of reminder, we've got, uh, I think, 18 um, smart city lighthouse programs just now, which means that the numbers of 116 cities is now smaller than it actually is, which is an enormous both financial investment by the European Commission, so the 500 million that they're spending on that, and also potential impact in the market. So to exploit that power, and there are other programs out there, is really very powerful. There are um, roughly 40% of those are lead cities, actually implementing and demonstrating in several fellow cities. And there are four significant task groups um, that are dealing with content. One is business models and financing, which is an action cluster, um, sorry, a, a, a task group, which I lead across all of the, uh, the SCCO ones. The second is replication, which Muriel Pels from Utrecht leads, who is on the call. The third is monitoring, which is led by Sergio um, from one of the cities in Spain, I can't remember. And the fourth is communication. So if we can bring those task groups together in terms of cross-cutting means to synthesize from the various different lighthouse programs, that's very significant. So that's the source of a lot of the knowledge. Um, and SKIS is a mechanism to harvest from that a lot of the data and value um, uh, that comes out from those programs and other EU investments beyond that. So in terms of dissemination of the learning, there's a new contract stuck in the middle, a very multicolored one called SCALE, which is supporting the Lighthouse programs. We obviously have the um, Smart Cities Marketplace um, joined up with SKIS. So that's now regenerating itself as part of this, uh, this session today, all supported by European initiatives in terms of um, the urban agenda, come to mayors and such like. And that provides a vehicle to um, support replication both in Europe as well as in the rest of the world. So that's by way of reminder. I have no idea why uh, it takes such a long time to, there we go, move through slides. Um, what does the current market look like? So an investor um, quoted cities are too small, too slow and too risky. So we don't like investing in them. Thankfully, that is changing, but that is the perspective, unfortunately, of a lot of investors. And actually, money is really, really important for us to deliver to those sustainable development goals. So we need to engage not just the public funds, but the private funds. And these are some of the challenges 
that underpin those three statements of too slow, too risky, and, and too slow, uh, too um, small, in terms of the, the current market. So you might look at this and say it's a bit challenging, and it possibly is. It's a bit depressing, and it possibly is, to a certain extent. Um, so in terms of modest scale, uh, most of people in Europe don't live in large cities, they live in small cities. So the smaller cities that are typically under capacity are the most important market for us. Um, in terms of decision making, the reality is public value is complicated. And so therefore, actually analyzing that takes time. Um, the typical time from idea to implementation in public sector, not necessarily in city, in public sector, data suggests it's around about four and a half years to get um, from idea to action. And typically you will have an election in that time. Um, cities also have a current hierarchy in terms of, um, of shall we say, sector hierarchies and, and, and spanning those silos is a bit of a challenge. And that's something that we've clearly felt as part of the smart cities journey. And then if we look at the SEC01 portfolio, 100 plus cities, probably a lot more than 500 deliverables sent that's into that's our friends at Linnea across what is in essence 20 fairly similar solutions. So who's going to read all of those things and how do we synthesize from Hi, uh, somebody Graham, you, you, muted me. Manon, was that for a purpose? Uh, no, no, sorry. I think it was a mistake. Okay. So yeah, I thought you were bored of listening to me. <laughs> so what is it that we can do to take away that perspective of the investor community and really change it to speed up the way that cities operate to make sure that we deliver faster and better for cities around Europe? That's the challenge that we seek to address through packaging. I have, there we go. So simple metaphor, Lego. We've all played with it, or most of us had. Importantly, my son, when he plays with it, I ask him to make a car, and if he picks up the box that's the car box, he makes the car precisely as per the picture, the instructions, and the pieces in the box. Unfortunately, his sister chucks all of it into his big Lego box once she's broken it. And then he'll come back to me and he'll say, here's a car, it's got wings and it actually goes under the water. The message behind that is that you can use interoperable component based solutions. To build it exactly the way it says on the tin or to innovate with it. So this isn't about a one size fits all. This is about actually understanding how we can use commonality in terms of the approach to both innovate and where appropriate to come up with something which is adoption. So the words adopt, adapt are good. The word create from new is perhaps something which we should do less of. So if we could think about providing that platform, that common platform, packaging is seeking to do that. On the left hand side of the screen, we're using the Lego analogy as our platform, as opposed to arguing about which platform to use. So that's a simple analogy in terms of what we talk about in terms of packaging. This dips down to two different levels of detail. Left hand side of the screen is the simple one, which is the three plus one model. So how can you connect societal needs to technical options, to business models and financing, and get those three things to spin around in a way which actually works um, more efficiently, more fluidly for the market, as well as really understanding deeply the nuances of the city in which you are implementing it. So that's the basic and simple model. Um, and on the right hand side of the screen, I don't suggest that you look at it, but there is a more complicated model that underpins the thinking about packaging. And the purpose of putting that there is just to say simplicity is a good thing. Um, however, there is some detail and depth that falls behind that. Not unimportantly also, the commission through as part of the uh, DG Research Awards, Innovation Awards, have given an award to the concept of packaging as being applied um, in increasingly across the SEC01 community. So it's a blessed by the commission. It's also built structurally into the new scale support contract for the Lighthouse community. Why would we do it? 
Um, there are various different types of benefits. I'll, I'll allow you to read those. But the important thing is there are benefits for all the different stakeholders in the market, both cities, importantly, most importantly, investors, industry, uh, and critically also society. So I'll just leave that there. It's also in the mural to scan through that. This is good for everybody. Um, and it basically, in simple terms, allows us to deliver smarter, better, cheaper, and faster. Um, again, I don't want to uh, ask you to read the detail, but there are some suggestions in terms of principles that could be applied to how we package um, the concept of Lego, uh, to adopt that as a metaphor in terms of how we do, to apply the packaging triangle, that three plus one approach, to make sure we do connect societal, technical, and business model options and tailor it towards cities ensure that we take a city needs led approach. Now I make a distinction here between a city led approach, which is individualistic to a city needs led approach where we're look looking for common solutions. Fourth one in terms of writing to the audience, absolutely the key. What you say to a politician, what you say to a service head in a city, or what you say to a procurement person or a technologist is very different in terms of style, words and length. So really think about the audience you're writing to, the result of which if we produce a portfolio, which I'll show you, a portfolio of materials that will, rather like the Mr. Men books or your favorite kiddies books, you'll get consistency and familiarity and start to trust it. So that's our opportunity to use the 100 plus cities to actually produce a coherent portfolio that will be used to disseminate in Europe and importantly around the world, because a lot of the rest of the regions in the world really look to Europe for ideas. If we do that, then clearly we need to manage the materials, the production and the through life consumption and use in terms of production and curation over time, which is where things like standardization organizations come in. So those are some suggested principles that underpin that. And then moving towards closure of this piece. So what is it that we're actually packaging? So I think there's a couple of slides here. If you think of the project life cycle, the four and a half years, and then the 20 plus years of implementation, the first bit is about, well, how do you actually expose an opportunity to various different stakeholders, be they politicians, leaders? So how do you engage the audience? And there will be a number of different types of documents that you could produce to actually support that. A leadership guide that engages politicians, a smart booklet, a six, 10 page document to get to the heads of all of those silos and say, we've got something which crosses over, which crosses over your silos and will actually deliver real value to people. A management framework that helps the project leader actually deliver a sort of um, a playbook um, to use an American term in terms of how things done or a smart leaflet that engages citizens, the society, the community. So if you think of the different stages, the st of delivery from engaging the audience, making the case for investment, how do you go about implementation and how do you actually through time capture value? There'll be different documents and there'll be different tools to support that for the various different audiences which sit on the left hand side of the screen. So that's the the, the essence of what we're putting there. And, and the 16 documents that are shown there are sh shown as examples. They're not a sort of prescribed way of doing it, but they're useful examples that have come through some of the work we've done to date. Now, I think three or four years ago, the board of coordinators for the existing Smart City Lighthouse program at the time reviewed this three by three matrix, which has been used quite a lot since, that maps what's the opportunity for scale advantage. So if we, instead of buying 10 units, we buy 100 or 1,000 units, then what's the advantage that we get in terms of value, in terms of strength of solution, and in terms of price from doing that? And how does that affect the market positively or negatively? On one axis, the vertical axis, and then the, the other axis is in terms of potential to scale. So we mapped at the time so solutions that the SCCO ones were working on and put them into three blocks, sort of quick wins, um, things like e-bikes, like smart um, uh, lighting and such like, um, a sort of second tier like housing, which was selected because it's a huge expenditure. There are 500 million people 
in Europe that are living in 1950s type um, large blocks of housing. So upgrading that is very important. And then the open data platform is something which enables lots and lots of smart city solutions. So through discussion, we'd agree that that would be the initial portfolio of solutions that we would package. So that talks through the solutions. And here is one quick example of one particular solution where we're showing the four different stages of delivery, the various different actual documents that have been produced, the different development drafts. So we have a 20, 50, 80, and 100% um, statement against most of these documents. And this is specific to one of those four, which is the humble land post. I think that's the point at which I wanted to stop um, this stage um, and then really move to the conversation point. Now, how we're going to do this. So my colleague Francesco has very kindly been putting together a mural. And um, we can see hovering there um, exactly that. Now, if I'm right, um, Manon, are we going to put the link to that um, mural onto the chat box for people? Um, I'm not sure because with 30 people, I'm afraid we're going to crash murals. So what I would suggest is that for people to raise, to use the button, raise your hand and then just start uh, asking your question or putting your ideas and then Francesco and I will uh, do the note uh, writing. OK, so let's do that. Thanks for that. Let's do it like this. Um, this is an eye chart for you. Um, if anybody can read the slides, you're doing very well. The beauty of this is we'll zoom into it and we'll play around with pieces of it. So, so that you can see my screen, which is actually looking at the website online, I suggest we do it as follows. So Francesco and Manon will capture your thoughts. Um, uh, if one of the two of you, possibly Manon, can sort of monitor the chat box and interrupt as is appropriate, that would be very helpful. And then bring in people to... Um, to, to, to chat and, and raise your points and thoughts. That would be the way I suggest we do it. So let's have a quick look at the, the overview first. So what we've got here, um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven is some additional slides, which I didn't show you. So if you have some specific questions and we want to dive into those, we can. The why we package on the left-hand side um, includes all the slides that I showed you. So whilst it, we're in the conversation, we'll be able to zoom in. There are um, in this session um, under why, what and how a number of specific questions which we're going to spend a little bit of time walking through. And what I'd like to suggest is that we ensure that we've talked about the why so that we meet the objective that you guys think this makes sense, because there's no point talking about the hot, the what and the how, until we've kind of flushed out thoughts on that. So there's two elements that I'd like to engage you in the why, which will I'll, I'll draw you into, which is um, I talked about some of the challenges, the, the too slow, too small and too risky um, stuff, and some of the barriers. We'll talk about, is that what you're seeing in the market? Is that what you're experiencing? So that's kind of question number one that we'll talk about. And question number two will actually um, ask you to contribute some of the priority blockers that you see. So that's in, in, in the why section. In the what section, we'll start to talk about um, two things in essence. One is the types of documents and tools and guidance that um, you believe make sense. So that gray box that's sort of in the middle top is where we'll start capturing that. And at the bottom, We'll talk about how do we actually move forward in this in terms of the measures that we've selected, those four measures we've selected, and how do we deal with championing of this to make sure that's going to be successful? So those are two questions in that what. And then the how should we get to it, and it's OK if we don't, is an opportunity to look at um, what content you believe you have to offer, whether you would like to get involved in terms of resource support, and then how do we engage cities and partners in the market to test this concept? So those are the three conversation points that we're going to have. So let us start 
straight away with um, uh, the kind of the why discussion. Um, and I'll see if I can get it such that some of the prompt slides are semi visible on screen. This one here is really talking about market challenges. To make sure that we produce a fluid um, um, and productive market. And the questions around here is really, are you seeing these challenges? And what blockers, if not, are you seeing? And that's the two questions that we have here. Whoops, apologies for that. Navigation challenges, there we go. Now with 30 people on screen, I'm not too sure, we won't obviously have the opportunity to for you to play, but maybe our opportunity here is to um, ask you all um, to raise your hand, come off mute, and start the conversation in terms of um, what blockers you see to progress um, uh, in the market related to those three things that I showed in the slide earlier. What blockers are you experiencing in the market generally in um, your SEC01 Lighthouse program? So I'll stop talking and start listening and Francesco and Manon can perhaps facilitate the process of capture. Who's going to be brave and start the discussion? Silence reigns. So now I'm going to be mean and nasty. I see that we've got Sandy and people that are in this. Um, so maybe some you, you can kick start the conversation. Graham, someone is raising their hands. Super. Um, I just use the initials, yeah. So please take it take it away. E K. Oh, it's it's Ilko Krasikha here. Ah, Ilko, hi. No, no, just I uh, just want to echo, uh, especially the third element of your slide, which says fragmented content. I think that's one of the, I think a, a, a huge challenge uh, to to sort of translate the intellectual output of all these uh, projects, be it SCC or one project, but in generally projects that are funded, which are deliverable driven with a specific target to really as you say package those in a meaningful way yeah, i think that's a that's a huge challenge it's a navigational challenge but it's also let's say uh, an absorptive capacity challenge for 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 people who may not have you know uh, experienced the same journey in the same intellectual journey as those who have been involved in projects so that's one element so i'd like to echo that fragmented and one thing that i'm coming across more often these days is also language like a uh, national language as well I'm not sure whether that is an element of your packaging thinking whether translation in any of the uh, other European languages is is on the on the radar and whether you have experienced the same sort of issue that maybe if you're trying to target let's say smaller size cities I think that will crop up at probably rather sooner than later I think yeah so yeah. let me pick up. Thanks, Elko. That's super. Let me and um, thank you for kicking starting the discussion. You've been soaked in this for several years now, so um, it's it's first hand experience. Um, on the uh, aspect of what it what we have to harvest from, um, and I'll I'll overstate to make the point. We've got seventeen programs, each with a real passion for their logo, for their brand, for their program. Very understandable and very appropriate. But we don't really have that one simple, clear logo that if you put it in front of Barcelona or the rest of the world, people say, oh, my God, Europe's up to stuff. In India, they have their 100 cities program, one program. In China, they have the 500 cities program. Actually, Europe's relevant. So that's an opportunity to start at the top in terms of consistency to get to the more practical level. You're absolutely right. So I write and a lot of people on this call will be involved in writing those horrible deliverables that we are re <laughs> required to deliver to an air. They're written where possibly a third of it is really good content. 
but it's all lost in amongst the usual European Commission response stuff. And that's not actually helpful for the average person in the market that wants to use it. So that is one huge, huge blocker. Um, and we must get around that. Now, um, the, the SKIS program was part of that journey. The scale support contract is part of that journey. And the task groups are part of that journey. But they haven't as yet joined up. That's not to say you know, I'm, I'm a half a glass half full person. There's a huge opportunity to improve. We just need to do it an awful lot faster. So point number one, um, that's really important. And we need to name it, accept it, and solve it. We cannot hide behind these um, constraints. Your point number two on language is a really good one. And if I go back to the uh, the point in terms of the types of documents that we produce, um, I think that that's possibly where the idea of, um, oh, it's somewhere hiding, lingering in here, the idea of the different types of documents we produce, there we go, um, my thinking is that the the leadership guide, which talks to politicians and possibly a smart booklet, they're both relatively short. So if we could produce in a common language and then translate them to local languages, that would be very sensible and resource wise, probably quite reasonable. The smart leaflets, which is effectively to communicate to, to uh, community, must be in the local language. In fact, a lot of the leaflets are probably not real leaflets. They're online guides, these sorts of things and videos. But we need to respect local language. Uh, that is, is clearly key. Um, and at the beginning of the journey, which is where we're at at the moment, what is a good thing is to plan that. What is a bad thing is to produce lots and lots of heterogeneous documents in different languages, because then all we're doing is exacerbating the INEA problem. So I think we need to knuckle down, narrow down and produce a portfolio like the Mr. Men books in the Waterstones bookshop that everybody gets familiar with, has confidence in. And this is not about just cities being confident. It's also that the investors go, ah, you typical approach, feels good. We've got some money to spend on you. Thank you, Ilko. Um, are there any other hands up or uh, people that would like to say something? Manon, are you observing hands? Yes, yes, I am. And uh, no hand is up. Georg, I saw Georg's hand was up. Oh, yeah. So Georg, I've just been criticizing the, the commission. Thankfully, not you. <laughs> <laughs> what, what, what views can you add to this, Georg? Well, yeah, well, it's, well it was triggered by the criticism, in fact, <laughs> of course. No, um, I think uh, uh, the point you made on the fragmentation of documentation is, is valid and fair. Um, there is, actually, we need to turn a few screws and knobs here. So it's, it's really not uh, only the fold of the NEA of the commission or whatever, we have also examples of Lighthouse projects who have uh, declared their deliverables as totally public, so there is no secrets whatsoever. So there is a degree of freedom. If a project consortium wants to publish their deliverables, then they can do so if that is anchored in the grant agreement. So just, just wanted to correct that uh, view a bit, at least. Um, when when it comes to the fragmentation of the other documentation, then of course um, I, 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 I take the hat on as the responsible for the smart cities marketplace here, and also for um, the smart cities information system. I think what we need to achieve is uh, uh, to to align a few already existing deliverables, which are very helpful when it comes to to um, yeah, pointing people in the right direction. Translation is certainly on our wish list. Um, when that is going to happen, we will still see. There is uh, the translation thing also we have in mind for moving to Europa quite soon. Um, there we might have an automatic translation facility, um, pretty much like you know Google Translate, but then automatic. That's one thing. The other thing is we have existing packages around, like information package, guidance packages. There is, for example, the Smart Cities Guidance Package, um, which is uh, hopefully also soon then becoming an electronic wiki kind of thing to which we can attach bits and pieces. 
as it, is, as it will be electronic, it could also be translated so that also stakeholders from across Europe can easily find the bits and pieces they would be most interested in, including packaging. So um, I, I think um, there is hope. It's not all black and white, of course. Uh, and um, it's a matter of really, um, yeah, uh, you know, making the links and, and bringing things together on, on one on one level of, of, of um yeah, on a, on a level of coherence, let's say. Uh, and that's a challenge, of course. Um, and I would just support, uh, and thanks for the very interesting introduction to the concept, uh, Graham, that packaging uh, could be one very essential, um, let's say, approach to, um, to make things less complex. And also, actually, like the Smart Cities Guidance Package, to provide... Um, uh, guidance and and uh, uh, points of access to the various roles when it comes to implementing a smart cities vision or or project, be it the civil servants working on the actual project or citizens or even mayors. So um, just wanted to signal here uh, um, that um, we are aware of the fragmentation problem, but I think we are uh, also trying to sort of solve that. And I uh, just want to offer if there is a specific question in that context, also for the Smart Cities Marketplace, I'm here to answer that. Thank you very much, Graham. Georg, thanks. And I, I mean, I think you raised something which I didn't emphasize enough, and I think I should. Um, you offered the example of the Smart Cities Guidance Package as a deliverable which has been initiated within what was the EIP, the Smart Cities Marketplace. And importantly, there are more. So as an example of that, I showed you the triangle. Top of the triangle, social engagement tools. How many SCC ones have captured the social engagement tools? Well, the beauty is we've had um, within the citizen uh, focused uh, action cluster, John Zib, who's been working very hard in terms of doing an enormous amount of research on all the various different tools that are out there. So that really strengthens that need to connect the marketplace, which is to expand the impact across Europe. That's what that's all about from the demonstrators within the smart city lighthouse so think of that as the funnel between a lighthouse which is proving and demonstrating and uh, capturing and synthesizing and then scaling out through the marketplace that mechanism is really really important to move um, move the market forward i noticed sandy you had your uh, your hand up um, graham i just wanted to take the this opportunity to jump in could you just please share the mural back again so people can have a vision and the slides? Yeah, perfect. Surely can. Thank you. Okay. Sandy, um, Sandy I, I, I know oh, I'm in the wrong part here. Um, so Sandy, you uh, wanted to say something. Is that correct? Yeah, I think, yeah, I think just to add to Georg's point actually around the fragmentation, we completely point of view um, in London, if, as if it were not complicated enough, we have 33 separate councils within London with their own budgets and their own local kind of climate action plans and targets and things like that. And so even within one city, it is hard enough for us to come up with um, kind of standardized solutions to bring the whole city forward. Um, and there are ways that we're dealing with that. But I think I would say, um, just to your point, your question about the blockers, and I think we, the one challenge I see uh, that cities experience is that at the same time, you there's some ambiguity. So they, at the same time, you have um, the feeling that, um, you know, the solution that we're trying to um, implement has been done millions of times before. So we don't want to reinvent the wheel. Um, so we want to do something that's uh, that's already been established and we can we can um, kind of shorten that process. But when you go out there and look, you actually see that there's so there's so much information out there that it's hard to under, to, to know which one's right for you and which one's the best one to 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 um, apply to your situation. Um, and, and on the other side of that, you also have um, there are there are feel there's a feeling that, you know, my situation in my city and the problem that I'm trying to address is unique and there's nothing out there that um, that can actually acutely address the, 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 the specific kind of contextual situation that I am in currently. And so I think there's a bit of a challenge in, in navigating these two extremes 
Um, of course, there's something out there, but it's hard to find um, given yeah. the kind of sea of information that's out there. And even within our Lighthouse programs, we have, like you say, 18 projects right now. Everybody's publishing their information um, uh, online and it's free and it's public and that's great. But how do you sift through that to find the one thing that you need? So that's just um, that's that's what we've noticed from from sharing cities. We're trying to do the same thing as well in sharing cities. We've developed uh, we're, we're, uh, pa um, packaging solutions. We're we're working on our playbooks and we've developed um, booklets um, to to um, to encourage others to um, to learn from what we've learned so that we they don't have to repeat the same mistakes as we have and, and can build upon our experience. But recognizing that there is, uh, you know, 17 other projects that are doing similar things. That's a good point um, you raised there. Uh, and thank you for the sea of information. It's a good way of putting it forward. Um, you raised the point about multiple municipalities in one city, e.g. London, but I'd also offer that, that you'd have the same thing across a region. Um, and this is our opportunity to stimulate collaboration between, I take the MRDH region as an example in, in Holland, which is around um, The Hague and Rotterdam and 20 other municipalities, very small municipalities around about that. So you can look at London as 33 boroughs, or you could look at the MRDH region as 22 municipalities. And depending on the solution, um, you can then figure out, should I deploy this, e.g. an urban data platform at a regional level or across municipality level in London? Or do I do discrete solutions? So, so that I think is worthwhile. The other thing is that you raise is uh, is the guidance on and uh, excuse me whilst I try and uh, adopt, adapt, and create. So, how do I understand my context in my city and figure out whether I create something new or whether I adopt something or adapt it? I think that's important. Um, timing wise. Uh, what I've heard from many of you, um, many who I know also who are favorable towards the concept is support and positivity, which is great because that addresses the barriers that we've talked about. Um, I'm just going to press pause for a second in terms of anybody that's got a dissenting voice, a counter view concerns. So please do use this opportunity to capture that, because what I'd like to now do is turn to the question in terms of so what are we tackling? Um, and, I, and I'm going to put a proposal to you around that um, so that we can capture that. So if there's any final people that would like to raise their hand in terms of particular concern about, you know, we shouldn't be doing this, then please do so now. Um, you could, I suggest, just type it into the chat box and Fran Francesco and um, Manon can build from there. What I'd like to focus on now is the is the actual, um, there's two points to this. One is the material that were produced. So I've talked um, about various different types of document, both in terms of written text and also technology tools. So I'll give you an example. This is the, uh, the lamppost. Um, for the lamppost, the examples there are the actual documents that we are in the process of producing. And as well as that, there is a digital platform which has been specifically built as a beta test example that's got all the data loaded up to help put the business case together and help basically a city to select the different use cases they want in terms of making it particular, so a tailoring it to their city as a digital tool. So in terms of documents and digital tools, um, first question is, um, is that complete? Is it covering what you would expect to see. So that's question one. Um, and I'll leave that to soak in your minds. And question two says, are we tackling an appropriate pool of solutions? Now here I've got a sort of a proposal to make. I think the humble lamppost makes sense because it's the aspirin of cities. Pretty much every city is doing something on that of some fashion so we can help and we're well progressed so it makes sense to do that. I think urban data platforms makes a great deal of sense because we've been collaborating between the old EIP SEC and the SEC01 programs. We've put together a dozen different documents and every city is trying to figure out how do I use my data better? 
So that's two areas that I think make sense. Very, very different. The first, it's dead easy to put a very compelling return on investment business case together. The second, it's nigh or impossible. There are two others where, as a result of recent conversations, I'd like to make a suggestion. The first is on housing, where um, we initially thought we'd put some stuff together on social housing, so big tower block housing. However, what we'd like to suggest is that we join that up as more towards the journey, the transition track journey towards positive energy districts, because the, la the, the, the later five, now six lighthouse programs are focused on positive energy districts. What is that? It is a macro harvest of a number of different other solutions of which housing is a very, very big part of it. So uh, the proposal is to join up the activity between housing and positive energy districts, and specifically on positive energy districts, to do so together with JPI Urban Europe, that's also supporting this. So that's proposal number one. And proposal or thought number two is around, should we be looking at e-bikes, which is very specific and very interesting, because it's very much driven by people and very much driven by often private investors, or should we be looking at mobility islands? And I have a bias towards suggesting that that would be a good thing. And a mobility island is a place which is where you co-locate electric mobility, micro mobility, like bikes and scooters and perhaps small cars and such like in terms of shared mobility with charging facilities nicely located in a number of points around the city rather than just a spray of bikes being left in the midst of the streets. So there's a suggestion here in terms of taking two of the four and perhaps going slightly wider with that. So two questions around the what. The first is, have we got the right suite of documents and tools? And the second is, have we got the right suite of measures? So let me open it to the floor for contributions on either of those questions. And I'll leave this here, Manon, so I'm relying on you to watch hands being raised. Uh, thank you. However, it looks like on my side, I don't see any raised hands. And earlier on your screen, I saw that you saw more hands than I did. Um, so maybe, Francesco, do you have another vision on that? No, so. Um, I mean, I, I have two screens, so I'm looking to have two screens so I can see, but there is no one at the moment raising hands. Uh, oh, someone, yeah. David. David? Please go ahead, David. Hi. Thanks, thanks, thanks uh, a lot. David, sorry to interrupt. Maybe you could just introduce where you're, where you're coming at this from. Are you part of the yeah, yeah. Lighthouse community? Yeah, from, from, from the Kladno of Czech Republic and being part of the Sparks project, which is helping us to, you know, to uh, transform our, uh, let's say, uh, energy energy policy, also in terms of some project proposals. That's a short short description. Yeah, I hope it's enough. Glad no, it's like 20 kilometers from the Prague, up north. So maybe you know you know the place. Yeah, yep. I don't know uh, the place, but I know we're up. I definitely, the yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I definitely uh, have to uh, underline and I agree with you with. Uh, having more complex the topic number two in positive energy district because positive energy districts is kind of approach we want to tackle in the project as well and social housing is i would say one of the target so kind of mixing kind of mixing positive energy district as approach together with why we do it and it's not only for the social housing we have a problem with the uh, offering generally offering housing for the inhabitants some decent one and then we try to come with different different purposes of the positive energy district so definitely agree with that and if since since that the, the approach is being quite new let's say in terms that this discussion is starting about the positive energy districts and it's uh, not only about the approach itself; it's uh, it's full of particular projects, such as uh, you know building retrofits, modernization of the heating system, uh, photovoltaic system, and so on. So we can find there are lots of particular projects which 
somehow needs to uh, where somehow you need to pay attention itself but yeah. for the first question i would say there is um missing missing kind of you know uh some some step by step uh manual how to proceed uh firstly with the you know technology discussion and secondly with the investors and the business discussion and uh, in the sparks we are developing some some kind of you know business business models uh, for instance yeah. Yeah. which is really helpful because definitely even during and after pandemic there will be huge depression as far as uh, as far as budget uh, city budget general budget so if we talk about the design of pet we don't have to uh, we can't uh, we just don't have to forget about the about the budget and the financial issue so yeah. if there is something particular or could be developed in more details it would really be beneficial and the Correct. secondly which is very difficult to achieve i guess it's you know targeted technical assistance i would call it like that because the as, as it was mentioned uh, i think at, at the morning there is no no one size fits all solution yep. and if there will be some kind of you know i don't know online chat or link or call center or or maybe some budget and experts who might be discussed with uh, as far as some solutions it would really help because yeah. somehow lots of guidances are quite general they are right definitely but they kind of general and we have to you know dig deeper and deeper and then we don't find any any recipes for that in the in the guidances good so david thank so, you so much for that yeah. you raised four points Did, were there all of them because i have written them down do you have any any others or are you finished you done good so no, let me no, thanks yeah, good. Let me respond to those four because they're four really good points. The first is the pet. So again, back to the Lego analogy. Imagine the um, the social housing is Lego piece one. Um, uh, then you have an energy management system is Lego piece two or is a collection of a few Lego pieces. The pet is effectively the Lego box. Each of those individual components are themselves solutions. So it's an aggregate of an aggregate. And I, I think that making the, having a focus on social housing as a very, very big um, cluster of pieces and paired as an overarching framework is very good. The IRIS project has been working on something called transition tracks. Think of it as a strategic framework or a roadmap. And we've been doing some work in the business models and financing task group around transition tracks and PED is a wonderful opportunity to connect that sort of story of where do I want to get to, how am I going to get there and where am I starting from? That transition track is very, very appropriate to PED. So thank you for affirming that PED is a good thing. And, and the positive point I'm raising is the fact that we've got a transition track to move towards that work in progress. Second point in terms of step by step, the management framework, which you'll see on the screen here, um, and in sharing cities, they're termed as a playbooks, is effectively that step-by-step -step guide. It takes the project manager through what do they need to do in step one, step two, sorry, stage one, stage two, stage three, and stage four. It really punctuates all of the, the list of things the project manager does. So uh, I'd commend that it be good, and I'd love you to offer yourself as a test candidate city to actually maybe trial for a lamppost it's done or for some of the other playbooks um, that step-by-step -step guide because that I think is the core of making sure that this actually happens so point two in terms of step-by-steps good you mentioned something which interestingly wasn't mentioned earlier and I'd like to ask either Francesco or Manon to capture it is the COVID effect so if you think of the reason why why would we package one thing which um, Sandy, who's from the Greater London Authority and her colleague Nathan raised some months ago is COVID has caused the boroughs of London to want to collaborate more. That's wonderful. That is the opportunity of the crisis, the desire to collaborate, which is very consistent with what we're doing. So COVID actually is an accelerator to what we're doing. And the last point you raised in terms of technical assistance, 
Um, the packaging doesn't address that overtly and directly, but it provides the material that does address it and the scale support contract explicitly does address um, technical assistance. And obviously there are various other European funding programmes that support that aspect of technical assistance, if you think of regional funds and such like. So um, what we what we seek to do is to put the material together that helps capacity building, but doesn't actually execute on capacity building and that the support contract, so that's where integration across all the moving parts that Georg mentioned, allows us to actually deliver on this. David, thank you for those points. Are there some others, Manon, that have popped up meantime? Yes. Yeah, um... Sorry, we have someone in the chat. Uh, Emilio Miguel, if you want to take the floor, please uh, feel free to unmute yourself and uh, ask your questions to the audience. Okay, so maybe I can read the question. Sure, that'd be useful. Thank you. And I see um, Mathieu. So was that Mathieu that you were mentioning? Mathieu Grosjean? No, no, sorry, Emilio. Ah, Emilio, okay. Uh, so he says, I am wondering on how we actually package such complex thing or combination of things as a smart city to communicate to citizens. Yeah, no, that's a good point. Um, simplicity is the answer to that. Um, if you tell a, a, a citizen all the details of all the specific technical things that a smart lamppost has got, you know, their eyes uh, glaze over very rapidly. But if you talk about things that matter to real people, like safety on the street, um, then they're more engaged. And this is very much about the words that are used, the people that transmit those messages, and where it's captured um, on paper, obviously, that's important. So that's that basis of engagement is vital. And that's, I think, a weak spot generally for the city's market. Um, I went to a, a city that will be nameless and spoke to the community manager and said, how do you engage people in the community? He was a community manager and done it for 20 years. He says, Graham, I, I kind of use the skills that I've always had. And I said, how many community managers are there in your city? He said, four. And I said, do you get together to compare notes? Well, we're dreadfully busy. We don't get a chance to do that. And I said, if you look to other cities that are doing well, what comes to the top of your list? He said, I don't know. That struck me as being a pretty horrible answer, frankly. So so helping to engage communities is, I think, uh, it's the, it's of the pyramid, it's the, it's the starting point. And so we've got to get an awful lot better at that. And that, that's where I mentioned um, when Gerd was talking, the uh, customer um, uh, action cluster within the smart cities marketplace and the tools and research that they've been doing. And frankly, I don't think we've joined that up with the lighthouse community. If we're on that journey, it's 20% at best. And that so therefore is a dreadfully important point to, to start. So Emil, thank you for that point. Very important. I noticed also when I flipped screens that Mathieu, you had a question. Yeah, thank you very um, much. Um, Emilia here. Sorry, I couldn't connect before, but um, oh, good. Please, uh, thanks. You. Thanks for the answer. Yeah, thanks for the answer for, to my question. Um, I, um, I I think uh, you you have spoken of um, adapt and adopt, and uh, I think we are missing a key word, basically with the same letters, which is adapt. We need. We really need to have adapts among the citizens. So I suggest that this ADAPT adopt, uh, we introduce the ADAPT. We, which Are you is, a professor? <laughs> uh, I, I'm, I'm not, I'm not. I'm, uh, I mean, I, I tried, but I <laughs> but they did me because they have, uh, you know, very free ideas. But I, um, I um, well, uh, I like anyway, I, Emilio. I think nice. if we introduce the ADAPT, uh, which is, uh, you know, uh, the buy-in from people, yeah. which is absolutely yeah. essential. I, I'm very impressed, Graham, by, by this presentation. Very, very impressed. It's absolutely awesome. But but at the same time, I, I can see such a difference uh, from uh, this uh, to to uh, what people perceive that um, and people's interest and everything that uh, that I uh, think and I've been thinking about this for a long while. 
that we really need to work with this uh, adept. So I like it. Thank you, Emilio. Thank, I'd like thank to offer, you very much. Yeah, I'd like to offer one thought. Um, so by, by the, the way, I introduce myself. I'm I'm with Making City, with the oh. um, later project Make Making City, where, where um, uh, as head of uh, collaboration, and uh, and I uh, I'm also the um, um, director of international affairs of Green Building Council España. But but yeah, I'm I'm very interested in lighthouse projects, but uh, but they are so far away from people that that worries me. Thank you. So Emilio, thank you. Um, you're not going to get away from us then. So as Green Building Council's uh, chair for Spain, and given you're part of making cities, I would uh, request that you get involved in the journey of packaging, um, and draw in your colleagues in making cities. So that's a request I'd make of you, if that's okay. I'd like to pick up on one important point you raised, which um, is how the heck do we know what good looks like in terms of engaging communities? Now, when we started doing some work on the Humble Land Post, we went to the world to find out where good practice was. And we landed... I'm, uh, sorry, I'm, I'm not hearing you well, Graham, at this moment, so... Uh, I don't know whether... I, 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 I don't, don't know if you're answering, you're okay. asking me questions. Okay. Uh, not, okay. not really. Yeah, Graham, I can hear you perfectly. It's a new which uh, whom okay. I have a little bit of trouble. I'm sorry. Maybe can you try to write it in the chat if you have another comment, so we won't encounter so, any another comment. comment. So, yeah. So, hopefully, thanks, Manon. Hopefully, Emilio, you do hear because this is an important point. So, when we're putting the packaging together for the humble lamp post, we try to find out where is good in terms of community engagement around things like lighting and it took us all the way down to the southern tip of New Zealand a place called Dunedin they have a world leading practice in terms of engaging the community around street lighting why because they worry about turtles and all of the biodiversity um, in terms of street lights that attract turtles and other animals um, blind them and they got run over by cars that worries the community so they had a community engagement process around that particular topic, which was excellent. So we've captured that as a best practice and built it into the material on packaging of, smart, of the humble lamp post. If we can do that more, if we can do it globally, then this packaging concept, which will incubate in Europe, will be great for European communities and great for the rest of the world. And that's our opportunity. We just need to all get behind it. So thank you for the, the vote of support. And my request is please do get involved. Mathieu, you have a point. Yes, thank you very much, uh, Graham, for this presentation. And uh, hello, hello, everybody. Mathieu Gourjean from Steinbach Europa Centrum. Uh, I'm already engaged in several EU projects of smart cities and communities. And um, I wanted to react on uh, the, the Lego box you spoke about, uh, the one related to positive energy district. Yep. I thought also, um, yes, there is positive energy district, but uh, the, a, a bigger box or with more uh, elements inside is uh, the smart city or the smart district. And um, related to this point, uh, I will speak about uh, the urban regeneration model of uh, Remoban that uh, several of you know about. And um, in fact, it's a comprehensive model to make uh, a city smarter, uh, which answers the needs of the city, which have been expressed by the city inside uh, inside a software, and then this uh, model is giving you a suggestion of uh, smart city technology packages and uh, enable you to calculate scenarios considering the objectives uh, related to the reduction of CO2, the energy improvement and the finances. And then it gives you the possibility to select uh, the right solutions and develop an implementation plan and support you for monitoring the success and finally assess the results uh, compared to the baseline. So I think there are a lot of uh, smart city uh, community, uh, EU smart city and community project that uh, did uh, something similar or, uh, yeah. or quite uh, similar. And um, I think it uh, it would be good because um, some of these projects are already finished. Um, uh, for example, uh, Triangulum, uh, Remoban, 
and um, and we will we will lose uh, this knowledge that has been gathered by this by these uh, different projects. And um, you spoke about uh, the, the the 100 cities in India and and uh, other um, yes uh, projects in China and so on where where the the, the vision is is already quite fine, is a, a little bit centralized. The the good point of this centralization is that when they are developing such a such a model or such a, a methodology, then you know that they will reuse it for the other projects. And I think that uh, it is also an opportunity for us uh, in the, in the European Union because now we have several several models like that, and potentially you spoke also about Iris, and potentially we have the possibility to merge these different models and bring all the different solutions that have been implemented in the different uh, EU projects together in one uh, in one piece or in one yeah. uh, model which would really help and uh, bring uh, the, the project manager of uh, wanting to make uh, it, uh, his uh, city smarter, will bring him uh, with um, by the end, uh, from the start, the ID, ID conception, the, the thought about the needs of the city until the, the assessment. And yep. I think that's it's, it's really the, the, the point now. Uh, we have developed a lot of uh, solutions like that, or we have developed a lot of, uh, well, I speak about models in this case, but um, we can think about all the other sol solutions that have been implemented. And as you said, it's 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 time to bring them together yeah. and um, and uh, try potentially to to look how to bring them together. Uh, we saw, for example, the the Green Deal, the 1.2, where we are speaking about uh, one consortium uh, responsible for. Uh, for 15 million euros, uh, 50 million euros, and uh, which is here to support the different cities and so on. And I think it is for this, uh, for example, for this consortium, uh, it would be good or it would be uh, more than good uh, that they benefit from such a model to have the possibility then to spread this, uh, uh, these uh, solutions or to support these cities with uh, a consistent model which is related to, uh, for example, like uh, uh, for Remoban, uh, different softwares which are uh, bringing, uh, bringing the, the product manager for the city from uh, the very beginning, from the ID conception until the very end and the, 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 the achievement, the, 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 the success of the, of the smart city district. Thank you, Mathieu. Um, uh, just re in response to that, uh, I agree, but in response to that, a couple of specifics. If you look at India and China, indeed, it's fairly monolithic and centrally driven. If you look at what they're doing around indicators, they've got their uh, quality of life indicators and it's being applied to all cities in, in India because they can. But the point is it's consistent, which therefore means they'll move fast quickly. Exactly the same in China. What do we have in Europe? Well, five or more years ago, we put city keys together and some of the lighthouse community using some of the city key measures. So we have a task group looking across all of those, which Sergio runs, to try and get some consistency on measurement. We are necessarily different. We don't apologize for that. We just deal with it. But our need to deal with that is absolutely vital. More specifically, and as you know, um, uh, so the triangulum approach, um, I actually looked three years ago at the first of the seven lighthouse programs at how they tackled business models and financing, the journey that you describe in terms of effectively packaging. And the two words that came to mind, Amelia will like it, is delightfully different, both Ds. Every single program, a, a very, very different approach because they had different ambitions and motives and, and such like. Intriguingly, Sharing Cities is the one program that has a horrendous goal to trigger 500 million scale up investment in smart cities. So we are absolutely motivated not to consume the 25 million from the commission only, but actually to use it to scale up. So that drove us towards the concept of packaging. But that's not to suggest that Sharing City has got the answer. It has not. It's got an answer. Having looked at Triangulum, having looked at Remo Urban and the four tools from Remo Urban through the business models and financing task group, for which you remember, the intention is to actually share and harvest all of those. The business models and financing toolkit we already have got from 60% of the programs 
their contributions of deliverables. The blocker is resource. We do not have the capacity to actually tackle that. And I'm going to use that as a transition point in the last few minutes of the call to address the last point, which is in terms of three questions. And I would ask everybody to type into the chat box so that we've got that. We also therefore know, know who it is that's contributing. Your thoughts on three, any of three things, which is what have you got to contribute? Do you want to get involved? So Emilio, I'm sure, is already typing yes, yes, yes. And, um, and, and how can you help the engagement process and um, this is, I guess, to a certain extent towards cities also in terms of actually testing and proving the materials. So I'll leave those three really important questions for a few moments and I'd ask people to, um, to, to start adding to the chat box. Because frankly, going back to the very, very beginning, why are we doing this? Well, I'll tell you what, I'm doing it for my kids. I have four of them. And when I look to the little ones, I go, that's scary in terms of what I'm leaving behind. So I'm driven by trying to improve where peop most people live in cities throughout the world. And that drives me to do a lot of things. So what drives you? And if nothing, that's OK. But if there's something which you've heard today, which makes sense, I would ask you those three questions. What materials have you got that you can contribute to this journey? Do you want to get involved in it? And finally, can you help to stimulate testing and use of it? So thank you for your contributions on that. And we'll kind of leave the, this is the beauty of Mural and Teams. It's all open, it's all there for you to contrib contribute to in terms of the chat. Um, and in the last, I guess, three or four minutes that we've got, um, I'll just leave it very much open to um, anybody that has any final thoughts um, should they wish to contribute. Please do, please do contribute in the chat box in terms of contributions and ideas. This is the opportunity, as Mathieu did, to actually say we've got some good stuff from Remo Urban and others. So I'm finished. Thank you all for participating. Has anybody else got any particular points that you'd like to raise before we um, kind of say thanks and, and uh, go and make ourselves a cup of tea? Georg, fire away. Yes, hi. Uh, so, sorry to, to come in once again, and sorry to abuse that opportunity. <laughs> um, I, I think what I want to raise once again is that we are all kind of on a mission to make things easier for stakeholders across Europe, across the various levels and roles of stakeholders as well. So I uh, just wanted to, to offer again and, and make aware again of this sort of common vision. So what you are presenting here, Graham, uh, in, in terms of the packaging approach, that's extremely interesting and very valid and, and, and uh, I think uh, uh, could be an accelerator for many, many proved solutions proven solutions, um, not only across the Lighthouse projects, but maybe also elsewhere. And um, I just, you know, I just dropped one thought in the chat box, again, on the Smart City Guidance package, but this is not a replacement, but like the mark, uh, city, uh, Smart Cities Marketplace could serve as a, a hub for easier access to information. And that could also be sort of an entry point for the package so that it is uh, used by the right people at the right time for the right purpose. Um, so I'm, I'm all open for um, taking that further. Um, and um, yeah, just wanted to confirm that once again. And, and many thanks for this great session. Thank you. Georg, thank you. And, and I think you reinforce nicely because of the purpose of these two days of discussions, the point which is the, 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 the incubators of ideas the lighthouse programs are very significant in scale. They are 500 million of your money within the commission. And the marketplace is the mechanism by which we really, it's the voice piece to Europe and the rest of the world to actually cause um, things to happen. Um, and so I think the join up between those two is absolutely key. And to Mathieu's point, we need to connect the actual content to make sure it becomes familiar, trusted, and gives us confidence. So thank you, Georg. With that, I suggest looking at my uh, 
2.29 UK time clock. Um, we should probably draw this conversation to a close. The slides are available to all. Um, I think it would be good, Manon, if we could send out to participants or maybe put in the chat box the mural um, link so that you can have a look at slides. Um, if you want to have any follow up in any way, then please do get in touch. And thank you for contributing both in terms of the conversation and ho hopefully also in the chat box in terms of ideas. We're on, we're on a mission, we're on a journey, and it is up to us collectively to make that happen. Everybody, thank you very much indeed again and enjoy the rest of your day. Cheers for now.